Hey guys, welcome back to Ferrigno Freedom Channel. I'm Dante Ferrigno, and I figured it was time to do another video review because I had this request sent to me by a viewer to check out this video, and it's taken me a little while to get around to doing it, so I'm sorry about that for whoever suggested it to me. I put it on my reminders list, so here I am checking it out now because it touches on an issue that I think is pretty important because so many people run into a hard time trying to consider changing their way of eating to something like a carnivore way of living because we have been given so much propaganda, basically, when it comes to eating over the past half century that most people have so many ideas about food that are wrong that that's the starting spot. But then on top of that, you start to take into account what are they putting in our food now? What What is going on with the food these days that is causing us to be not only heavier and sicker and having more problems in general, but also what's causing people to have difficulty having children? What's causing people to have difficulty with their sex life? And some of the stuff that's in the food can definitely play a role with that. In this case, this particular video is called Contraceptive Drug Found in Fast Food. And this is by the Epic Times. This is a channel that I found when I, uh, I don't know when I found the Epic Times channel, but it was around 2020. And uh, I have found them to be a very useful source for information. I even subscribed to their newspaper for a little while. I don't have a lot of time to read newspapers, so I don't currently have that subscription. But they have a lot of good information. As a matter of fact, they were how I heard about Redmond Salt for the very first time. And it was an article that they had done. It was an uh, advertisement news article combination type of thing that Redmond had done talking about the benefits of salt. And that was around the time that I started this way of eating and finding out about salt early on. That kind of clicked in my head later on when I heard Michaela Peterson talking about the need that we have for electrolytes and how that was the thing that kickstarted me off on doing lion diet. But like I say, this video doesn't necessarily touch on carnivore eating directly. This touches specifically on what are we feeding our families? What are we eating when we go out to eat? So let's take a look at this because we already know that fast food is bad, but so many people just ignore that when they go out and buy food for their children or they buy food for themselves. They figure, Ah, I'll get a low carb version or I won't eat the bread this time. Well, this might give you pause about what you're eating when you go out, period, because when you hear something like contraceptive drug found in food, it's definitely got to make you wonder, what in the world are these companies thinking? So we're going to take a look at this video. I just got to put my headphones in real quick and set it up so that my computer is not fighting for sound with my microphone. All right, so now we're ready to go. Let's play the video. Good evening, and right before we dive in, I'd like to quickly mention that this episode, the one that you're watching right now, actually has a companion episode over on Epic TV, our awesome no censorship video platform. In that exclusive episode, we detail how, unbeknownst to most people, there's a giant push to scale up the use of both mRNA technology as well as gene therapy on the livestock that winds up on our supermarket store shelves. Meaning that whether it's beef, pork, lamb, chicken, or turkey, the meat that you're buying from the store could very soon contain remnants of mRNA-based vaccines that the animals were treated with. And that is, by the way, if they don't already contain them. If you'd like to check out that awesome exclusive episode, the link will be right there at the very top of the description box below. I hope you check it out. And now, diving into today. Well, that one's certainly worth checking out. You know, that's one of those things that I've heard about and I've had... <clears throat> and I've had a lot of ranchers give a little kickback on saying that we're not doing that. That's not going to happen. And, you know, local ranchers have a little bit more flexibility in what they do, especially if they're not selling the meat directly to a business or something like that. But that's definitely been a concern for a lot of people. And I hate that that's even a subject because store-bought meat is how I lost most of my weight and got my health together on the lion diet. For those of you who aren't familiar with what I've been able to do on an all-meat diet, specifically a lion diet, ruminant meat, water, and salt only is all I've eaten for close to three years now. 
But back when I started, those first seven months or so, I was buying my steaks at Walmart and Sam's Club and Publix and wherever I could get beef on sale. And I would buy lamb as well and any other ruminants I could get my hands on, like bison and buffalo were the most common other ones that I could find. But for the most part, beef has done it all for me. And it has been a fantastic change. I was able to get rid of all my gut issues. I was able to get rid of high blood pressure. I was able to get rid of some problems with low testosterone and hormonal issues in general. I have been able to just about fix everything that has ever been a problem for me. And here I am about to turn 51 years old next week, and I feel better than I have my entire life. It's truly amazing what a carnivore way of eating has done for me. And I keep running into people that are starting to say things because they're, they're hearing more and more about this carnivore way of eating. They're saying, oh, yeah, you drank that carnivore Kool-Aid. I'm like, what, what's, what's the Kool-Aid? The Kool-Aid that takes you out of the crazy food system that we've established around false science involving what we should be eating that started all the way back with Ansel Keys and what happened after the Eisenhower effect. And for those of you who aren't familiar with that, keep your eyes open soon. I'm going to be doing a review on a book coming up soon that covers all of how we got where we are. And I'm only about three hours into this 24 hour long book or 22 hour long book. I can't remember. It's longer than the ones I've been reviewing. But just in the first two chapters and the prologue, it has been packed full of information that I had no idea about. And I take a look at this stuff. So it's it's truly revealing. So keep your eyes open for the, the review that I'll be doing on a book by Gary Taubes called Good Calories, Bad Calories. But meanwhile, let's go ahead and finish this video talking about the contraceptive drug found in fast food. Main topic. According to a recently published laboratory report, food samples from McDonald's, as well as from several other national food chains, they were found to have detectable levels of animal antibiotics as well as animal contraceptives. And although the sample size in this particular study was small, it does highlight a much larger issue. The fact that all these chemicals and drugs that go into our livestock, well, they might be ending up on our plates. And so let's start at the very beginning by going through how the study was conducted as well as what specifically it was able to find. And as always, I hope that if you appreciate content like this, which oftentimes goes completely under the radar of the mainstream media, well, you take a super quick moment to smash those like and subscribe buttons so that this information can reach ever more people via the YouTube algorithm. Now, to start with, this right here is an organization called Moms Across America. They are a nonprofit whose mission is to bring awareness to food that contains GMOs as well as pesticides. And last month, back in September, this organization took food samples from 10 of the most popular food chains in America, and they submitted these samples to be tested at a laboratory over in the state of Iowa. Specifically, these tests were conducted over at the Health Research Institute, which itself is a nonprofit that tests food for things like nutritional value, contaminants, as well as toxin. And Moms Across America, they asked this laboratory to test the food samples that they sent to them to see whether they had the presence of 100 different veterinary drugs and veterinary hormones. Here was specifically how this group collected the samples to be tested. Quote, most of the food was sampled from America's top 10 most popular food chains. Volunteers from Moms Across America went to their local McDonald's, Starbucks, Subway, Chick-fil-A, Burger King, Taco Bell, Chipotle, Dunkin', Wendy's, or Domino's stores and ordered the same meal several times. Kept in its packaging, each meal was sealed, frozen, and mailed to the Health Research Institute. And so then, after receiving these samples, the laboratory took in the food, they ground it up, and then they tested it for the veterinary drugs and the hormones. And what they found was that, with the exception of Chipotle and Subway, all of the food samples tested positive for one of three different types of veterinary drugs. Specifically, they tested positive for monensin, nerosin, and nicarbazin. Although it is worth mentioning that the concentrations in all of the food samples were below what is allowed for by the FDA, meaning that none of the detectable levels were breaking the law. However, despite them being able to fly under the FDA's limit, the chief scientist over at the laboratory that was conducting these tests, he said that, quote, the FDA's acceptable intake levels are meaningful for checking acute poisoning. Yet in the case of fast food, which some people consume daily, there is a concern for chronic poisoning due to accumulation of toxins. Now, in terms of what these detectable drugs actually were, well, the first one was called monensin. This is a pretty commonly used antibiotic for animals whose side effect 
within animals can include, quote, diarrhea, weakness, and motor problems. Overdose of menensin can cause an animal's poisoning or even death. And because this is an antibiotic specifically for animals, menensin poisoning in humans is very rare. Although there was a case over in the UK back in the year 2017, wherein a man drank 300 milligrams of menensin, which led to a condition in his body known as rhabdomyolysis, wherein his muscle tissue began breaking down and leaking into the bloodstream. It's a very serious condition, but the silver lining here is that that man ingested about a million times more than what was found over in these food samples. As you can see, based on the lab results, less than 0.5 micrograms per kilogram were detected in the food from Taco Bell, Dunkin', Wendy's, Domino's, Burger King, as well as McDonald's. And just for your general reference in terms of broad safety levels, according to FDA guidelines, the acceptable daily intake for humans of menensin is 12.5 micrograms per kilogram of body weight per day. And so the detectable levels in the fast food flew well below that. Now, the second chemical that was detected was called nerosin, which is a drug that's commonly used in the raising of chickens. Quote, Nerosin is an antibiotic and antiparasitic feed additive that helps control parasitic infections in fattened chicken. It is also often added to cattle feed as it increases dry matter intake. Both nerosin and monensin are ionophores, meaning they can disturb the balance of ions in cells and are often used in animals to control bacterial and parasitic infections. Side effects of nerosin in animals include anorexia, diarrhea, and degeneration of heart and skeletal muscles. And according to the lab results, less than two micrograms per kilogram of nerosin was detected in a Wendy's cheeseburger, and it was also found in trace amounts in food from Dunkin', from Domino's, as well as a Starbucks sandwich. And again, just for your reference, in terms of the safety level, according to the FDA guidelines, the acceptable human daily intake for nerosin is five micrograms per kilogram of body weight per day. And then lastly, you had a drug known as nicarbazin detected in the food as well. Now, nicarbazin is used as both an antiparasitic as well as a contraceptive in animal livestock. Quote, the drug is primarily used as an antiparasitic drug in fattened chickens and turkeys, but it has also been used for population control of geese and pigeons. Since it is highly toxic to agricultural embryos and decreases egg laying and hatching among grown poultry populations, many farmers have called for more regulations to protect their animals from such exposures. Now, within the food that was tested over in the laboratory, nicarbazin was detected only in the sample of Chick-fil-A's chicken sandwich. And in that sample, less than 0.5 micrograms per kilogram of nicarbazin was detected. And again, just for your reference, according to the FDA, the acceptable daily intake for humans of nicarbazin is 200 micrograms per kilogram of body weight per day, which is significantly higher than what was actually detected. Now, up until today, there have been no reports showing that nicarbazin has toxic effects in humans, although there was one research report. You can see it up on screen for you. All right, let me back up a little bit there so I can recover what he's going to talk about next. But I just want to say something about these FDA guidelines. You know, this is something that I have been harping on for years to people about how we just go about trusting that everything is okay like when you pull up to a drive through window at a fast food restaurant or any restaurant, they usually have a sign, if they have a fast food window, they usually have a sign up there that shows the score they got from their last health review. And it's almost invariably an A most times you go. But if you've known anybody that works in these restaurants or you've had a situation where you've actually seen behind the curtain on what goes on there, a lot of times the, the things that should be being done are not being done. And it's just as easy for somebody, especially the owner of a restaurant, to maybe grease the palms of those who are coming to check on certain things to give them time to fix a problem or to do something that shouldn't be done because, you know, these, these government employees aren't always making as much money as they would like to make. So they can be influenced easily. But then there's also the things that don't get seen because they're not looking in the right place or they're not there all the time. And of course, when the health inspector comes by, everybody gets to, to work right away trying to get things put away that need to be put away and hiding things that should be hidden. But the point isn't so much that there's possibly graft going on. The point is that we trust these things that we see way too much. 
I, I, you can go to restaurants and see those 100 marks and you think everything's fine here. But then if you go on to Yelp or somewhere where you can check what customers have said about this place, they'll talk about how their food didn't taste right or they found something in their food or they had a horrible experience because the food was undercooked or overcooked or just not cooked the way it should be. So we, we take what we see where the government says everything's fine and we just move on. And in the case of the FDA, the FDA has proven, in my opinion, to be a lack of a reliable source for the determining, for determining what's healthy for us to eat. Because one thing that they use on a regular basis when determining if a new food product or a new drug is going to enter the market is something called grass, generally recognized as safe. And the thing about that is, is that it's, it basically allows the manufacturer or the company that's producing the product to tell you, tell the FDA that it's similar enough to something that's already approved. And a lot of times these things don't get researched like they should because they're looking at it. They see what's there. They're like, okay, well, if you say so, I'm going to go ahead and market as generally recognized as safe because they're, they're just, they're humans. They're, they're going to make bad decisions because a lot of times you're dealing with a public servant who is not happy in his job, that just wants to get through the day, that has a certain amount of these things to approve. That's just on the one side. Then you've got the other side where people recognize that graft is going on here as well because the FDA is getting all of its funding from the companies that submit these products to be reviewed. That is a conflict of interest in and of itself that should be enough to give you pause when trusting sites like the FDA for your answers. And again, this is my opinion. I'm just some guy on YouTube. My feeling about it is though, based on human nature and what I have seen personally in situations where I've had to deal with health inspectors is that the information that's being used is often distorted. And then on top of the, the, the generally recognized as safe being a problem for rubber stamping new products because you always hear about these products being pulled off the shelf later on once the FDA caught on to what was going on. But that's usually only after somebody on the outside has looked into it like they've done here and then applied some pressure. So this constant rubber stamping and this swinging door that allows new products to come into play is not really protecting your health. And that's how I look at it personally, because we face a dilemma where we have so many people in this country that they have, they have problems in their life. They have enough going on to where they listen to something like this is approved and then they'll just jump right in and go do it. They'll jump right in and buy that product or they'll use that product. And then we find out later on all the major problems that came from it. And in some cases, you can't even do anything about it. There's no recourse. There's no way to sue anybody because there's laws that have been put into place that protect the companies that make the product. And those laws are made by the same government that's approving the products. It's a very concerning situation. I don't know what the answer is going to be because writing letters to congressmen isn't going to help. Writing letters to the FDA doesn't seem like it's going to help because there's a lot of people in our government right now who are focused on an agenda and they're moving us in a direction that is unhealthy for us. The best thing I can say is try to raise your own food as much as you can. Try to buy local as much as you can and it's going to help to keep some of this stuff out of your life. At the very least, staying out of the fast food restaurants is going to help a tremendous amount. It has toxic effects on humans. Although there was one research report, you can see it up on screen for yourself, which assumed that nicarbacin would be safe for people with the logic being that most of the turkeys who are fed this drug would act as something like a filter, breaking down the nicarbacin before it reached your dinner table. However, it's worth mentioning that the organization which coordinated this laboratory analysis, they weren't necessarily convinced by that sort of an assumption. Here was in fact a statement put out by Ms. Zen Honeycutt. She is the executive director for Moms Across America, and here's what she said, quote, the impact of millions of Americans, especially children and young adults, consuming a known animal contraceptive daily is concerning, with infertility problems on the rise. The reproductive health of this generation is front and center for us in light of these results. And indeed, as of today, very few studies have been published which have investigated the effects of these veterinary drugs on humans, which is something that Ms. Honeycutt continued to point out, quote, that's the problem. 
These are veterinary drugs and hormones. So the only studies that I have found and that you will find will be for animals. They're not authorized for humans, and yet they're being allowed into the food supply. Some people are consuming this food every day, so we don't know how much they're accumulating in their body. Furthermore, even though this particular test was conducted on a rather small sample size, taking food from restaurants in isolated geographical locations, well, Ms. Honeycutt added that other chains might also be affected because of the way that the whole food production operates. Quote, my understanding is that they're grinding the meat of hundreds of birds in order to make these processed meat patties. So when one is contaminated, it likely contaminates possibly hundreds of other samples. If one comes down with this particular disease, then the farmer will likely treat any of the birds at a facility with the hormones and antibiotics. She further added that more testing will need to be conducted in order to figure out whether other restaurants within these chains or other chains altogether have these same issues. Regardless, we here at the Epic Times, we reached out to the fast food chains that were reported on in this analysis, but we have yet to hear back. Once we do, once they get back to us, I'll add whatever they sent to us as comments. It'll be down in the description box below this video for you to check out so you can check back in there regularly. Otherwise, if you'd like to go deeper into this research and go through these lab results for yourself, I'll throw all the relevant links. They'll also be down in the description box below this video for you to peruse at your own leisure. And then lastly, as I mentioned at the top of the episode, if you are looking for a phenomenal companion episode to what we discussed today, well, you're in luck because we published an exclusive episode detailing this push to scale up the use of both mRNA technology as well as general gene therapy on the livestock that winds up on our supermarket store shelves as well as on our dinner plates. Meaning that whether it's beef, pork, lamb, chicken, or turkey, the meat that you're buying from the store or the sandwiches that you're buying from restaurants could very soon contain the remnants of mRNA-based vaccines that the animals will be treated with. That is, by the way, if they don't already contain them. If you want to check out that exclusive episode, you can find the link. It'll be right there at the top of the description box below. You can just click on that link and head on over to Epic TV and check it out for yourself. You can, of course, cancel at any time, but something tells me you won't. Something tells me you'll be a subscriber for a long, long, long time to come. Again, that link is right there at the top of the description box below. I hope you check it out. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed. Most importantly, stay free. All right. <clears throat> well, that that says a mouthful. And, um, you know, the best thing I can tell you, because I know he talked about it at the end, you can always click the, the link to that video that we just watched in the description. Go watch it there. You can see their links in the description for the other video that they talked about, because that's definitely been a concern for me. We have got to be more aware of what's in our food. We've got to be more aware because we're feeding this to our children. We're feeding this food to our families. We're eating it ourselves and there's health effects. There's health effects and it sometimes it seems like, and it may be that this is done on purpose, you know, because we've got this big collusion with big pharma and government right now that seems to be running amok. And the food companies are right in there with them. And it's like a cycle of money to, to create a cash crop of people that are sick and addicted to foods that are nutrient deficient, full of things that are bad for us. And now we find out that we're getting contraceptive drugs in our food that we might go out to eat. All I can say, folks, is support your local ranchers support local businesses that are growing their own food try to go to farmers markets if you're eating vegetables still get to know the people who raise your food find out if they're drenching their crops with glyphosate 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 whichever one it is glyphosate uh roundup if they're using roundup to kill off their crops to make it easier to harvest there's no way they're getting all that out of the food. I mean, these things get into our bodies and they cause all kinds of problems. And when we look around and we see things like cancer still being high, even though we've put things in check like smoking and supposedly cholesterol, which has been controlled by our wonderful government that's helped us to come up with all these crazy ideas about low fat eating that as I've come to find out, turns out is what was causing me to be heavy all my life, what was causing me to be insulin resistant, what was causing me to have gut problems, what was causing me to have high blood pressure. All the things that I was following in those recommendations are what put me very close to death before I started eating this way. And I just want to be able to encourage folks that you can take control of your way of eating, but it is going to take a serious change of mind about where you get food, why you get food, 
what food you get, and also dealing with the social problems that come with eating this way. Because you're going to get resistance from family and friends. You're going to get a lot of pushback from the same people, just like many of us were at one time, indoctrinated with the fact that the medical system has figured out all this and that the recommendations by the government are healthy for us. We have got to get back to a natural way of eating, eating food the way God intended. And you can see results like I've been able to see which is what I would love to see for everyone. I want healthy, happy neighbors. I want healthy, happy friends and family. I want you to be healthy and happy. So that's why I review things like this. That's why I talk about my carnivore way of eating all the time on my channel here at Ferrigno Freedom. If you're not familiar with it at all, please check my very first video, 125 days on lion diet, and you'll see where I was and how I got to where I am now. And I am still learning about health on a regular basis. And it has become my mission in life to help people get healthy and avoid eating things that are going to cause them problems. Avoid taking medicines that are going to actually, in some cases, make the problems worse. That's all I got for you guys this time. I'll see you later. One of the things I do to fight back against big food and big pharma is to recommend companies that make animal-based products that are good for our bodies and good for our skin. In this case, I'm talking about Vintage Tradition. Vintage Tradition tallow bombs are a go-to for me now, especially the unscented one. I like it because it doesn't have anything extra in it other than extra virgin olive oil and tallow rendered from suet. For the tallow they use making the tallow bomb, highly saturated and therefore more therapeutic than any other. They don't use any trim fat or any other fats besides suet. So if you want some ancestrally appropriate skincare products that are going to help support the carnivore movement, head over to VintageTradition.com and use my discount code DANTE, D-A-N-T-E, to save 10% on your order. I promise you won't regret it. Their products are fantastic. I love them, and I use them all the time. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat?